Proxy chains. Now, as the name suggests, proxy chains are basically a chain of proxies. Now, where is a proxy used? A proxy is used whenever you want to anonymize yourself on the wire or the network. You do not want to know or you do not want your others to know what the source IP address was for your client system. And to do this, all you have to do is send your packets through a bunch of intermediary systems and these intermediary systems carry the packet out and they transmit it to the target system. And this is much slower. And let's see how we can use this in Kali Linux now. In combination with Tor, to, in order to anonymize traffic, not only on web browsing traffic, but rather instead on all networks related traffic generated by pretty much all your applications. But you can also change this in the settings. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the proxy chain configuration file and we're going to understand all its options that are available. So to do that, all you have to do is say nano. You go into the etc folder and then you go for the proxy chain dot conf. And what you see out here is the nano editor. And we had spoken about the nano editor when we were discussing the CLI part. I hope you haven't skipped that. Now what you see out here is a bunch of instructions and options. So let me just zoom in into this command line interface and now you can read everything much well. So what proxy chains is, well, it gives you the ability rather to route your traffic through a series of proxy servers and stay anonymous in such a fashion by hiding behind them or by having them forward your requests. So it looks that on the other side that your requests are coming from them as opposed to you. Now, surprisingly enough, there are a large amount of these proxy servers out there that you can use, but they're not very stable. You know, they go up and down and they're not very fast. So for specific targets, they can be useful, but not for brute forcing and not for any sort of computing attack. So suppose you're doing something to a certain target. If you're trying to log in or you're already logged in, you can definitely do it through proxy chains and it will be reasonably fast and reasonably stable as well. But if you're doing some sort of mass scanning or you're brute forcing a password or something of a kind of a proxy chain with a list of proxies selected from the internet, especially the free proxies, it's not gonna work. I mean, it's going to work out eventually in a technical sense, but it will consume more time than you can spare. And by that, I mean, it can be very, very long time. It can take about months or two to do a simple scan. So that's not an option. And there are other ways of doing that. But for the time being, I just want you to know how you can use proxy chains and how you can configure it. And actually, because it's really useful and I use it fairly often and a lot of people do. And it's a fantastic piece of software. So first off, we have the types of proxies. So you see HTTP, SOX4 and SOX5. Now, there are fundamental differences between these protocols. And you always want to find yourself a SOX5 proxy as that's the best possible one. And that has the ability to anonymize all sorts of traffic. HTTP, well, as the name it says, it's for HTTP traffic. And SOX4 is very similar to SOX5, but it does not support IPv6 protocol and it does not support UDP protocol. So this can be SOX4 and it can be rather problematic. And you always want to make sure that you're using SOX5 wherever and however. Anyway, down below, you have these other options which we will go over. So basically how you enable these options is that uh, you don't need to type some complex lines of code or anything of any kind. Basically, all you have to do is just delete the hash out here. Let me just show you. So suppose we wanted to actually activate dynamic chains option. So all we have to do is delete the hash, but let's put in the hash right now. So after you delete the hash, all you have to do is save the file and the option is enabled. This hash presents a commented outline, meaning that the system reading this will Ignore if there is a hash and if there isn't a hash, it will take it into consideration and interpret it accordingly. Anyway, what we have here are statements which allow us to specify how we want our traffic to be routed. So first off, we have dynamic chain. Now dynamic chain is a sum and is an option which you will find people using the most. It is most commonly used option and a preferable one too at that. And honestly, I think it's the best one out there primarily because it's the most stable one. And here's why. Now suppose you have ABCD proxies. So those are some servers with IP addresses with open ports. And if you have a strict chain policy, which is enabled on this computer right now, as you see, if you have a strict chain policy, we can only be able to access any site on the internet in general by going through ABCD. So you have to go through all of them and you have to go through them in that specific order that is ABCD. And that's not always a good thing. I mean, if you're paying for five proxies, that's not a problem because they will always be operational and they will always be up. And why not? That's not a bad idea or an option. 
but there are however people who use proxies for free and they don't tend to pay for them why would you pay for like five proxies for a simple scan or something of that kind they're not free and they cost money and they're rather expensive also but still i mean the act of paying itself identifies you and kind of diminishes the amount of anonymity you have on the internet so some complex payment methods can still be used to actually anonymize yourself but it's fairly simpler to just use a dynamic chain so firstly we're going to go ahead and uncomment the dynamic chain option and we're going to comment out the strict chain option so strict chain will no longer be used and i will be using dynamic chains and one more thing to note here is that if you want to use proxy chains in combination with tor if you want to route all your traffic through the tor network not just web traffic you must be enabling dynamic chains i mean there is a chance that it will work with strict chains but due to the instant instability of tor nodes it is highly unlikely you will need dynamic chains and that is why i'm using them anyway if you are using dynamic chains just give you the ability to go from a b c d to your desired destination by not having to adhere to any order so let's say c is down and you would go a b d and it would work with no problems even if b was down you would go to a d and you would go and still reach the destination so as long as one single proxy is functional it's going to work and you don't require any specific order to do it down below now down below you have some other options too so first is random chains now random chains in effect are basically the same thing as resetting your service i mean if you're resetting your tor you will be now assigned new ip address in tor assigns your new ip address every 10 minutes or so anyway with the random chain you can specify a list of ips and then you can tell your computer okay i want you to try and i want you to connect to this point and every time you connect every time you transmit a packet i want you to use a different proxy and we can do that as well and that's one of the options definitely and you can say okay use this is phone five times and then change to another one or some kind of like that there are a lot of options to specify there primarily the chain length anyway down below there's quiet mode and uh, you don't really need that then that proxy dns requests no leak from dns data this is very important you cannot have any dns leak and let me explain to you what dns leaks are and even though somebody cannot get your particular ip address they can get the ip address of the dns server that you are using and that DNS servers do is resolve the main domain to the IP address and vice versa. So for example, if you typed in youtube.com, the DNS server of your local ISP provider will resolve that into some sort of IP address that YouTube has, and it will make a request, no problem. And you do not want that happening because your local DNS server will be discovered and that is information that can be used in order to figure out your personal IP address. And when that is done, your physical location is pretty much compromised and that's a no-go and you definitely need proxy DNS here. It might slow you down a bit, but without that, you're practically not anonymous and it's just a matter of time before somebody finds you. Now, if you go down below, we have some other options here, but we're not really interested in them at the moment. What we hear are for the formats for entering proxies and I'm gonna leave it at that. So what you see out here is first the type of the proxy that is SOX5, then the IP address, then the port number, and then two words that is Lama secret and then juice to hidden. Okay, so now what you see out here, as I just said, is how you would actually write down your proxy chains. And now, as I had already also said, you always wanna be using SOX5 and you don't wanna be using HTTP because they're not really that safe. And SOX5 doesn't support a lot of options anyway. And this is the IP address of the proxy server that we will enter a few of them manually later on. And this here is the port number that you see on which the proxy server is listening. And that port is open over here. These two words now, what some proxy server especially paid ones will always have a username and password. So you can just type them here in plain text. Unfortunately, it is assumed that only you and you alone have access to this computer besides this file. And besides this file is you, not not everybody can read this file anyway So if you can just type in the username here and password here You will gain access to a certain proxy that you have chosen or that you have paid for Anyway, these are just some examples and we won't actually be using these proxies or anything of a kind We need to go down below here out here You see and at the end of the file. So if I just press enter a couple of times there we go So here is only one proxy active at the moment and since SOX4 and all traffic being routed here through Tor by default. So let's set to Tor now and Tor default listens on this port. So this uh, 905 report is where Tor listens on. Now what we want to do is we want to add a SOX5 proxy address. So what you want to do is just type in SOX5 and the same IP address SOX5 
and you want to be keeping the space incorrect just use tab so 127.0.0 done one and then you want to specify the port number also so 9050 so what you see out here the 127.0.0.1 this is the loopback address of your computer so this is for into device communication and if you ping this address and if you're pinging yourself basically and usually people ping this address in order to make sure that the ip port protocol is set up correctly even though they don't have internet connectivity so let's just type in 1.27.0.0.1 and the same port number and 9050 so now we have to press Control o to save our file and we're going to save under the same name and we wrote 65 lines of codes down and that's written and now you have to press Control X and you exit out. So let's press Control L and clear out our screen. Now we just edited our proxy chains configuration in a very neat environment. So to go ahead and type in our service door status. So we want to check status of our Tor service. So service Tor status. So Tor service could not be found. So do we have the Tor service installed? Okay, so Tor service is not installed. Just give me a little moment. I'll quickly install it. Okay, so now that we have set up our proxy chains configuration file and we have put in a SOC5 proxy chain giving it the Tor service. Now what we need to do first is start up our Tor service. Now to actually check if Tor is running or not or if the Tor service is running or not, let me just clear that out. We need to go service Tor status. And you see it says it's inactive. So what you have to do is say service Tor start and that will start the Tor service. It might take some time depending on the system that you're using and voila that it has started it for me. Now what you have to do to actually use proxy chains before you go to any website. So all you have to do is say proxy chains. Then you specify the browser that you're using. So we're going to be using Firefox and you could say something like www duckduck.com so now here you will see how your thing is being transmitted to duckduckgo.com when i say thing i mean your packets and your requests i'm sorry for my vocabulary so now your packets are going to be directed through a bunch of ip addresses but we haven't actually put a bunch we just have put the loop back for the tor network so we will let tor do the rest of the things for us Okay, so depending on your system, this might take a little bit of time to actually open up. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's actually happening on the terminal while this thing is loading up. Okay, as you can see, it's going through a bunch of proxies out here and some are denying it and some are saying it's okay. So as you guys can see, most of the time you might get denied and it'll be a lesser number of okays and that is exactly what we're looking for. Because primarily we have gone a great extent for the anonymity and what you want to do is stay like that. So this is basically how you use proxy chains. Now, if this computer just decides to open up TuckTuckGo.com on Mozilla, I could actually show you some interesting stuff. But it seems my computer has kind of given up on actually opening TuckTuckGo. It's still waiting for TuckTuckGo's actually confirmation, but that's about it. So this is how you can actually configure proxy chains. I'm really sorry that my computer isn't working right now so well and nothing is actually opening on Mozilla. It's mostly because my RAM is overloaded. I think I should go ahead and get myself a new RAM. But for now, let me just also say that we can put some custom proxy lists and instead of just saying, let me just go ahead and open up that file again. As you guys can see out here, I'm going to end this right now because my computer can't really take all this pressure. See, it's lagging so hard. Okay, let me just quit out of that and let me just open up a new one. Now, as I had said that you can put up some custom proxy lists. Not really gonna do that, but let me just show you how you can do that. You go nano and you go cetera and proxy. So you basically have to go into the proxy chain. Okay, so I think I have to put this again. Yeah, now if you just go in and edit out here, all you have to do is set up dynamic chains and you can go online and search for free proxy lists and that'll give you everything with the port number to the IP address. Let me just show it to you. Free proxy server list. So all you have to do is search for free proxy server list and you can see out here the proxy type is HTTPS and you basically want to find a SOC5 proxy. To find SOC5 proxies, just add that into your keyboard 
And once you find those proxy addresses, all you have to do is take down this IP address and followed by the port number. And you go ahead and just put it down in this configuration file. And then you hit Control O and you just save it and then you just go back. So that was all about proxy chains and how you can set up proxy chains to set, make yourself very anonymous. I'm sorry, the whole Mozilla part didn't work. That's your sad state of my computer. But moving on, let's go ahead and study about Mac changes.